Let's read High Drawing Drawings Part 2. Today I am going to discuss you basically the layout of the hydraulic drawing, how it arranged, uh, what is the power supply section, control section and drive section and what are the basic symbols and how the basic operation of this simple circuit takes place. Okay, let's move with the content. The hydraulic circuits, there are two types, open loop and closed. What does it mean by open loop? Open loop means, you can see, this is the tank, the pump and the pressure line. There will be a directional valve and this high pressure side will drive an actuator, in this particular case, a motor. And the return oil will come back to the tank. There is no connection between the return line and the pump. There is no connection. So, there is no any closed pump because this return is open to the oil tank and pump has to take the oil from the tank. So, we call it as open loop circuit. There are a few advantages and disadvantages of open loop system. The main disadvantage is you have to use directional control valves to control the fluid direction and the flow. In that case, whenever operating of this directional control valves, there will be pressure fluctuations in this uh, system. So you have to use additional uh, what we call accumulators to uh, buffer this pressure fluctuations. The next one is closed loop circuits. This is a closed loop circuit. In closed loop, not like the previous case, you have the pump and let's say this side is pressurized. In that case, it drives the, uh, the final controlling element and the return will come back to the pump. This one acts as discharge. In that case, this one becomes suction. If it requires to turn the motor in other direction, let's say the pump, the swash plate or this variable delivery pump, it will change its flow. This side become discharge and the motor will turn in other opposite direction and the pump takes suction from this side. So there are on any return path which exposed to the oil tank. But this is a problem. Why? Of course, this has few advantages. There won't be a requirement of a directional control valve because this is bidirectional pump. It easy to control the fluid flow then you can change the direction as well as the flow of the quantities or the work done or the power you can control and that will be very much smooth and infinitely variable with this kind of swash plate pump or variable delivery pump. So there won't be much uh, pressure fluctuations in the system. So that is a bit advantage. But the main disadvantage is what happens as this is a closed circuit, the hydraulic oil quantity is limited to the pump capacities, whatever the remaining in the pump as well as in the pipelines, very small quantity. And there will be heat produced during this circuit operation. And there is no way that this heat can be taken out. So you have to have special arrangement to introduce new oil and to take some oil uh, which is uh, being in the system. So for that purpose, you have to use a charge pump because if the pump has internal leakages, definitely the small circuit, it will lose some oil and there will be some misbehavior in the system. To avoid that, you have to use a small charge pump which continuously suck or whenever there is a pressure drop in the system below a set point. That time it will suck the oil from the tank and put into the system. Put back into the system. Right? So the charge pump, it should have a pressure relief valve which sets the minimum pressure. So always whenever the pump suction pressure falls below, the main pump suction pressure falls below this set well or the charge pump pressure then the charge pump will inject that pressure to the suction line creating the uh, the fluid flow constant or the maintain the fluid the system 
as well as there will be leakage line, drain line provided. Or else you need to have a special shuttle valve arrangement to remove some amount of fluid from the closed circuit for cooling purpose. In my next video, I will be explaining you uh, how that you achieve cooling of uh, hydraulic fluid in a closed loop circuit. So there are two circuit kinds, open loop as well as closed loop. So what I'm going to tell you that to identify hydraulic drawings, to identify the systems, you have to have basic idea of what is an open loop circuit, what is a closed loop circuit. And what are the essential components in a closed loop circuit? What are the essential components in open circuit, open loop circuit? Let's move to the final session of this discussion. As a basic, I will show you how to read this small or uh, simple hydraulic drum. First, see how this circuit is arranged. This is a typical diagram of vertically arranged hydraulic drive. The bottom part is consists the power supply section. This is your power supply section. What does it mean? It produces the power, fluid power. You have a pump that's a fixed delivery, unidirectional pump, drives by an electrical motor, and it sucks the fluid from the tank. That is a vented type tank, that is not a pressurized tank. These are the details that I'm going to grab because already I explained you the symbol. So you have to grab what I am telling. And this pump, it does not contain any suction field. Directly suck. Normally, there are always there will be a suction filter, but in this particular drawing, you do not have a suction filter. Some case, you in most case you have, will have a suction filter here. And the after the pump, pump uh, elevate the pressure or the flow of the flow. In that case, if there is any pressure excess pressure develop, it may damage your pump. So to prevent damaging, you have to use a relief valve. This relief valve, how does it work? Whenever the pressure increases, that pressure tapping is taken by this line. And that pressure, there will be a pilot line which operates on the pressure of the pump, discharge pressure of the pump. Whenever the pump pressure exceeds, this pilot line pushes the valve against the spring setting. And this arrow will align the ports releasing or draining some amount of pump delivered flow fluid back to the tank and maintaining the pump pressure at particular set point. This is how a pressure relief valve works. This pressure relief valve is mainly to protect your pump. And you can see there is another relief valve used on upper stream. The purpose of this one is to protect the piping and other associated component in the upstream circuit, the, the upstream components, right? To protect the upstream components. This, the principle is same. Whenever the pressure increases, that pilot pressure applies. Whenever the pilot pressure exceeds the set pressure against the set spring force, it will push and align this line so the pressure will drain. There is a return line filter provided. So let's see. Okay, this is the hydraulic power pack. Now you know a power pack what it consists normally filters, electric motor, a hydraulic motor, leaf valve, the gauges, indicators. These are the Next, we are going to move to the next section. We call it the control section. The control section, it needs energy. In this case, a man, a human will operate a D10 switch type directional control valve is here. So, it need to have input signal and the signal processing to be done. Then the valve will activate. Maybe in this particular case, this valve change the direction of the fluid from P to B or P to A. If this 
left hand side block shifted to center then what happens the pressure side p will operate uh, p port will direct to power port a from p to a if this block comes in and b port will expose to t so this will be written if this side get pressurized oil comes here oil has two paths but this path it has a check valve so it will not flow in this direction it will not flow in this direction instead it will flow in this direction with a control manner because there is a uh, flow control valve variable orifice flow control valve and as the oil enters this piston starts to uh, the cylinder starts to move to left or right let's say right this side but to move that this side it has already oil that oil must return somewhere let's say the return path how it works okay oil comes here it has two paths oil cannot move from this side because it's a check valve non return oil has to flow from this side oh my god there is a relief valve kind of a thing so oil will not either flow or return from this this arrangement we call a counterbalance valve very important counterbalance valve the purpose of this counterbalance valve is this is kind of a relief valve actually whenever if the pressure exceeds the set point of this then the pilot pressure increases and this valve opens allowing oil to flow from p to t p to t only at that particular moment the piston will start to move from left to right and what happens whenever the piston starts to moves and let's say uh, there is no back pressure or pressure starts to reduce in that case if the pressure is reduced what happened there will be fast movement of this piston that is danger if this one is moving some kind of a mass or lowering some kind of a mass if it is not under control manner it may go fast due to momentum or inertia it may damage the core so it has to move under control manner so this counterbalance valve ensures only to open the return path whenever the pressure exceed some certain limit so the piston will not freely move it will move and it will hold whenever the pressure drops whenever the pressure rises that time it will open so it will move to the right, left to right under control and the return path okay whenever that piston starts to moves then this as this arrow comes here from port b to port t the return side that will open and fluid starts to flow through a cooler through a cooler the hot oil will cool down and through a filter it will return back to the tank so this is how it operates when the position of this block moves to its left let's say this right hand side block when activated so then the p port will uh, direct to the b power port in that case the oil comes to flow from this side but it will not flow instead there is a easy path of through this check valve and it will push the cylinder to the left and the return one it will not flow through this one it will go through this check valve and from a to t because as this arrow line here a to t and return takes place so the return side so when this side is get activated the cylinder moves fast because it does not have any restriction or counterbalance arrangement right? okay this is the basic uh, circuit diagram and how that uh, uh, sections are divided normally the power starts flow from bottom to top so the power supply units uh, you can monitor at the bottom of the hydraulic drains the middle section are the control uh, of the directional uh, section 
and the final part is the drive section, the actuator part. Right. So this is the basic layout of a hydraulic system. I believe that you get some idea about basic hydraulic diagrams, how to read them. And I wish to join with you on next video with uh, deck machinery, hydraulic circuits, steering gear circuits and CPP control circuits as well as the most complicated uh, modern uh, crane hydraulic system with hoisting, slewing and laughing operation. Let's see each and every single details with PLC engagement so then you can find it easy to uh, fold finding whenever it is required. Thank you for being with me and if you like the videos please subscribe and ring the bell icon so then you will not miss my new videos and uh, also please comment on this and put a like. Thank you. Thank you.